Hello, I'm Jennifer Muller, and I'm delighted to be speaking about Marcelo Pereira. I first met Marcelo when I was choreographing a piece called Woman Visitors for the company Ballet Stadium in Brazil. Immediately, I fell in love with how wonderful he was as a dancer, his spirit, his generosity, his technique, and I fell in love with him as a person. Very shortly after that, he came to New York to be in my company, Jennifer Muller the Works, and my first memories of him in New York were wearing a wool cap and gloves and a big wool vest in rehearsals because he had never been in a place as cold as New York in the winter. Very shortly, Marcella became one of the lead dancers in the works and originated many, many significant roles in the company. On stage, he not only had an exquisite technique, but he had that amazing quality called charisma that just captivated you watching him. That combined with kind of an innocent, generous spirit made him absolutely something that just came out and grabbed you as an audience member and as a viewer. He was absolutely a delight to watch. I can remember him in very many roles in the company. He was doing, uh, we did an outdoor piece in the a garden called Longhouse Reserve, and he was tied with a rope and under a tent, and the animal force of this was incredible. I remember him in a piece called The Waiting Room, where he, had, he was a, a silent specter that was the dangerous element in the piece. It was almost like a spirit character that had control over the other characters, and he was able to exude a tremendous sense of danger he did the opening solo in The Spotted Owl, and it was an exquisite solo. And he did in Thesaurus a very fun part where he had a long pole and he pushed off the pole and bounded all over the stage. These are only a small bit of what he did. I've put together a video for you with the help of my magnificent dancer here in the company, Seiko Fujita, that shows some of the pieces that he was here in, in the works, but not certainly all. And you're going to be able to see how incredible a dancer he was, and I'm sure still is. Marcelo is not only extraordinary technically, but I think that he's one of those very, very one in a million rare people that absolutely brings his personality across to the audience, out into the audience, so that he captures your heart. I think all of you are extremely lucky to be working with him wherever you are. He has a generous soul, a wonderful soul. He loves life, and he is absolutely full of spirit. I wish him all the best, and I send my love to you, Marcelo, wherever you are, and for the celebration of all the people that are going to acclaim you and celebrate you. Thank you.
studies on the growing concentration of American wealth and income show that the United States has become the most economically stratified of all industrial nations. Federal Reserve figures show that the richest 1% of American households, with net worth of at least $2.3 million each, have nearly 40% of the nation's wealth. At the bottom end of the scale, the lowest earning 20% of Americans earn only 5.7% of only half the tax income paid to individuals in the United States each year. While incomes rose from most affluent two-fifths of the nation's households, the rest of the country suffered from falling incomes, creating the result that the average American is working longer hours for less pay, often holding down two jobs or in the equivalent of a single job a day. At the bottom level of the scale, the majority of Americans are experiencing the economic reality of the A total of 125 tornadoes had struck in 11 states and caused 303 deaths. Astonishing extreme climate saturated 350,000 acres of farm. The center of the eye struck the coast at about 11.30 p.m. An estimated 100,000 of the debris made 530 miles of road impassable. Total damage was estimated at 1,420 million. five or six decades would exceed the entire rise in global temperatures since the end of the last ice age. 